Hello, Oscillator Sync here. I think when the Mod Wave was first released, a lot of attention was given to the Wave part of the name. Uh, the last few years have kind of seen this resurgence in uh, interesting wavetable synthesis, and, and rightly so, I think it's a, a great way to explore sounds. But I think really where the, the real power of this synth uh, lies actually is in the mod part of the name because the way that the modulators are laid out the types of modulation sources that we have the way that we can mangle them the way that we can have them interact and the very very extensive mod matrix on this synth actually the, the fact that it's a wavetable synth is almost not that important the way that you can interact with that synthesis engine with this extensive set of modulation options is really where the excitement lies for me personally anyway. To that end, over the course of the next few videos, I'd like to explore each of the different modulation sources on the mod wave and talk about why they're interesting and what sort of creative things you can do with them. Because the level of flexibility in some of these uh, modulation sources really are only otherwise available in the in the world of modular and even then certainly not on every module uh, that you're going to come across so um there aren't many synths that i feel like i could spend an entire video talking about its envelopes uh, but the mod wave is one of them and that is what we're going to do uh, in in this video today so the first thing we should probably note before we talk about any particular features of the envelopes is that we have uh, four of them on the mod wave and they are labeled filter, amp, OS1 and OS2. What is important to note about each of these envelopes is that you can send them anywhere. Uh, the only one that has to go to the place that's listed here is the amp. Uh, the amp will always go to the amp, um, so the loudness of each note that's being played. But filter, OS1 and OS2 they're kind of suggested that that's where they're going and there are sort of pre-rooted knobs for you to turn to, to send them there but you don't have to send them there and you can send them to any other modulatable parameter on the synth so the next thing that we should probably look at here is uh, what type of envelope we are dealing with and it is uh, for all intents and purposes our uh, good old familiar uh, adsr attack decay, sustain and release envelope. And if you'd like to learn a little bit more about uh, how envelopes work, then um, I'll put a link in the description to a video that I did about envelope recipes. But this is probably the envelope type that we're most familiar with seeing on most synths. One thing that is definitely worth noting about uh, the envelopes that aren't the amp envelope is that our sustain can be uh, negative. Uh, and that's a really, really interesting thing. Um, let's um, take a look at how that might be used. So I've just got an initialized patch here with just a little bit of release on my uh, amp envelope here. And if uh, we'll just stick with the filter envelope, I think, as a, as a starting point. We'll just darken the filter a little bit, like that. And our filter envelope is currently set up. Uh, we'll have it in a sort of standard way that you would maybe expect to see, kind of a slightly plucky patch here and if we give that some some envelope amount there on the filter this is kind of the standard <laughs> filter setup isn't it really uh, a little bit of resonance we've got that pluck it's sitting in a particular point and then we have that sort of dying away uh, aspect at the end there. It's sort of typical of a standard sort of filter setup. The nice thing with the, um, uh, the envelope on the filter here is that we can set our sustain to be lower than its starting point. Let me open up the filter overall a little bit. So it goes down to that really low place. And then swoops up as you release, which is kind of a different feel. Then you're able to easily get on a lot of synths. Which I quite like, uh, and it's just one of those things that through the nature of this uh, envelope setup we can achieve, so rather than dying down, we die up. Which 
which is very nice. So each of our envelopes has three pages. The first is where we can set our envelope shape with the ADSR. Um, and I'll just set this to be like a little plug kind of sound and maybe like a second decay. Same on the release, something like that. I'll do. Cool. Uh, on page two, we have uh, this ability to alter the curve. So what does this actually do and what does it do to our patch sonically? So we're going to start with the amp envelope here because it's probably where we can most easily hear what's going on here. So the curve allows us to change um, each of our uh, the movement parts of our envelope, our attack, our decay and our release between being linear and exponential or logarithmic as it is on the uh, attack portion. So um, let's just listen to what that does uh, before we talk about why and uh, what it might be used for. So I'm um, just going to come to my decay portion of my envelope here. I'm going to set it back to linear. And I want you to listen to the way that the tail end of the note kind of uh, goes. Can you hear the very end of that note there? It's kind of unnatural, right? It kind of just feels like it dies very quickly at the end there, despite the fact that it's got a smooth transition to zero. And that's because in the real world, the volume of things don't tend to die off like that in a linear fashion. Now, if we contrast that with, say, setting it halfway, so this is halfway between linear and exponential, and listen again to the very end of the note, sounds a lot more natural right the very end of the note seems to die off uh, a lot more sort of sensibly you might think that also if you compare um, that with linear if we listen to the start of the note now when we go halfway here that very first part of the note is now sort of pluckier and a bit more tacky uh, so what's happening here um, is as we move towards um, exponential um, at the very end here with exponential, the start of the decay will be very steep. It will go through a sort of more or less linear portion in the middle, and then the end of it, where it's already very, very low, is going to be very, very smooth. Um, linear, on the other hand, obviously just goes down uh, in a linear fashion. So here, the start is a, a, a bit more abrupt, and the end is a bit more smooth. And if we go right the way to the other end, the start is... Very abrupt, very plucky, and the end is, it's very smooth, although we can't necessarily hear all of it because we're so low by the time that we get there. Again, in the middle. And then quite unnatural there uh, when you hear it uh, with the linear. So generally for the amp envelope, we probably do want it somewhere in the middle, somewhere from sort of five upwards. Uh, and we can still, even with um, our 10, where it feels like it's dying off a lot faster, we can kind of compensate by lengthening the decay, and we still get that much more plucky start out of it. And so sort of balancing the decay time and the curve can get you slightly different characters of... Um, both the onset and end of our uh, sound. It's a really, really nice way to fine tune what's going on um, in your patch. So on the other hand, we have our attack here. So I'll just send this fairly long, like not, not 20 seconds, but maybe like 10 seconds, somewhere around there. Um, yeah. Uh, and then we'll come into the second page here where we have our uh, curve here. And we'll start, what am I doing? Uh, start with a... Um, a linear attack and listen to the very start of the note on this can you see how it almost felt like there was a lag to the onset of the sound like actually when i play the note it almost doesn't start straight away um if we turn this up maybe to halfway again 
what this is going to do is the um, kind of the opposite to the exponential, and that is that the very start of the note is going to go, uh, the very start of the curve is going to increase quite quickly, go to a kind of linear bit, and then um, sort of slow down at the end. And now, um, so this was the linear onset, if we go to a logarithmic, or sorry, a halfway. Can you hear there that the start of the note happens quite quickly, but then we still get all of that movement throughout the rest of the range. So for very, very long envelopes, being able to switch to something approaching a logarithmic envelope, especially for attack, that can make sure that your patch still kind of <laughs> starts when you play a note, and right the way at the other end at, 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 at 10. Comes on real quick, and then a lot of movement happens in the middle. And then when it slows down towards the top of the attack, you don't hear so much movement because it's moving so slowly by that point. But this means that you can have obscenely long, like 90 second uh, envelopes, and still start as soon as you hit the key, but then still have all of that movement happen up there. So generally with our amp envelopes, we're going to want to have um, somewhere sort of you can probably go a bit lower than, than five, but somewhere between sort of like three and 10 would generally be a good place for our amp envelopes. And as you go longer and longer, you might want to consider going more and more logarithmic to accommodate uh, that. So if my advice is um, for amp envelopes to stick towards the exponential logarithmic side of things, what's the point of having the, the, the range really? So it's nice for fine tuning. On the other modulation sources, uh, we can be a bit more creative with our curves and not necessarily stick so hard and fast to this rule. So I'm just going to set this back to be like a gate with a bit of a release. I'll do. Something like that. Maybe let's move over to the filter for a second and uh, I'll just shut the filter down a bit. And give us some mount there. So um, here, I'll just set this to like a plucky thing. Uh, like that. Something like that. So at the moment, the way this is set, um, what am I doing? Uh, the way this is set is um, that we're sort of halfway again. Uh, if I set this back to linear for our decay, that's still a very useful sound. Compared to the halfway, and compared to full exponential, very plucky now. That first bit feels a lot more abrupt and sharp, so if we're maybe trying to do like a really sort of acidic, plucky attack to a, to a bass line or something, we might want to go towards the exponential. But I think like the, the linear portion here sounds almost more like someone smoothly moving a knob, right? It's a bit more synthetic. But synthetic is good on a synth. <laughs> you know, that's what that's what, kind of what we want sometimes. So here it's a much more creative uh, choice, a much more of an aesthetic choice, rather than something that's sort of like you probably want exponential most of the time. That's not the case on um, modulating other parameters other than amplitude. Uh, again, also on the attack, if we give this a bit of a longer attack. Um, So here's a linear attack. And frankly, that's perfectly nice. Um, uh, again, it kind of sounds to me like someone turning the filter knob, which, I, which, is, which is nice. If we go to the extreme within logarithmic, we kind of get that swoop in a lot sooner which again is really nice and it's a purely aesthetic choice. The other side effect of having this set to logarithmic instantly you might be able to hear is that it feels like we've got an attack portion and then it kind of chills out more or less at the top because that last part of our curve is so gentle that it's almost a, a way of delaying our decay portion. So it feels like it's finished. 
but the decay only just kicked in there, right? So we can also use this to almost give us a pseudo hold section on our uh, attack um, uh, envelope as well, which is cool. And again, it's going to vary from parameter to parameter and patch to patch what, what you're going to want to do here. But like I say, unlike the amp envelope, this curve fine tuning gives us a lot more of a creative license to do stuff that's interesting, I think, on other parameters. Okay, so having those really flexible curves on the envelope are a really nice way of fine tuning things. Um, but the final page of our envelope actually gives us something that's really quite exciting. Um, so let me just set this back to being like a plucky friend again. Um, and I'll do something like that. Great, okay, so page two we have our curve. Page three, we have this um, trigger page, and this is the same on all of them. The difference with uh, AMP compared to the other pages is that um, on the other pages we have this trigger at note on setting, and I'll talk about that in a second, but they all basically function in the same way otherwise. And what we're able to do on this page is say that I want this envelope to not necessarily only trigger because I pressed the note. Instead, I want this um, to trigger because of something else. And that list of other things is basically any modulation source in the entire synth. So anything that we can use to modulate another thing, we can also use to trigger this envelope. And this is really, really exciting. So as a, as a basic example here, if I um, set the trigger source to be our, um, well, let's use our, our amp LFO, in fact, there we go. Um, our amp, amp LFO is sat here, it's going at um, two hertz. And if I now play a note, you can hear that my amp envelope is being triggered over and over again. And to be clear, this isn't the amp LFO that's actually doing this. If I was to change the shape of my envelope, it's absolutely the envelope that's being triggered here. The LFO is just being used as a source to trigger it. That's really cool. Uh, so I'm just going to get rid of that for a second. Um, move that back over to off. There we go. So back to our normal um, implementation. And I just want to show you um, a few different applications of this envelope trigger that are, I think, particularly um, interesting and creative. And hopefully that will spark some other ideas uh, for you to look at as well. So the first example I want to give you is related to the sequencer. So I'm just going to set this um, amp envelope just to be a, a little plucky friend again. So something like that'll do. Yeah, okay. So um, I'm just give it some release as well. There's a little plucky sound. So um, We'll talk about the sequencer in depth in another video because there's a lot to talk about in, about the sequencer. But the thing that you need to know about the sequencer is that it's not a normal sequencer. It's not kind of a sequencer that you play things into and then they sort of play back. I'll show you what, what, what uh, I mean. Um, so if I come across to the um, pitch lane here, and I'll just make our sequence uh, a little bit uh, shorter, maybe just like six notes or something. And um, let's just sequence some notes in here, or rather sequence some offsets, because you sequence um, the uh, transposition of the note that's playing rather than um, the actual note that's playing, which allows you to re-pitch the sequence on different notes by playing different notes on the keyboard. As I say, there's a whole other video about this. Please don't see this as a limitation, what I'm about to show you, because the flexibility that this gives you to do other stuff outside of normal sequencing, I'd much rather have this on this synth in particular than, than a conventional sequencer. Anyway, so step one, uh, we'll just have it play the root note, then we'll have it do a fifth, and then uh, like a minor third, and then an octave, a 
above and then like uh, another minor third and then a fifth again or something like that. Um, doesn't really matter um, for, for this illustrative purpose. So if I play a note, um, well, we can kind of hear that the sequence is playing in the background there, but it's just kind of been faded out by our envelope. And if we turn up the sustain on our amp envelope, you can kind of see what's going on here. The sequence is playing and it's changing the pitch of our notes, but it's not its not doing a key thing that we would expect a sequencer to do, which is to re-trigger our envelope, right? Um, so can we have our sequence re-trigger our envelope? The answer is yes, certainly we can. So if we come back into that third page here with our trigger here, and uh, we're going to change our trigger source to be uh, on generators down here somewhere, we have the step pulse here. So we've told our envelope to um, re-trigger on each step pulse of the sequencer. And now if I hold down a note, we get what we would expect to have with our sequencer. Now, the interesting thing is this is going to be working per note that I play. That's something to discuss on the sequencer uh, video. As I say, there's a lot to talk about with this sequencer. There's a lot of things that we can do. But one thing I do want to show you um, before we um, move away from the sequencer is that at the moment we've coupled our... Um, We've coupled our notes, uh, our envelope being played to the notes uh, on every step on the pitch. And one of the brilliant things uh, that you can do with the Modway, which I love to do in the world of Modular, and I can't really think of another um, sort of normal hardware synth where you can do this, is decouple our gate and our um, our, our pitch. So um, we've got these A, B, C, D lanes of sequencing here as well. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to set the trigger instead to be step sequence A. And we see we've got our threshold here of plus 50%, and that means that um, any um, step on this um, sequencer lane which is above 50, it's going to trigger. Um, I'm just gonna make this shorter, but, but a different length to uh, the other one, so I'll maybe go with seven. And I'm just going to send, set the transition to be, um, I'll set it to be uh, off actually, uh, individual would work as well, but we'll just set it to off. This just means that we're not getting slew between them, which can mess with the envelope triggering. But now if I play a note, we're back to our original uh, situation because we're not getting uh, any more trigger information because none of the uh, steps here have anything other than zero on them. So if I set this one to uh, anything above 50, it doesn't matter. can now hear that every seven steps we're getting a, uh, a trigger happening there. We choose another one, like the sixth one. And now we can decouple these two uh, different parts of our uh, pitch sequence. We could turn our sustain up a bit. So we still hear the bit in the background. And we get these cool rhythms happening. And if we hold that, uh, we could turn our filter down and have this set as a nice little uh, plucky thing as well. It's not going to trigger at the moment because we're not playing any notes, but we could set uh, this envelope, our filter envelope, to trigger uh, using the next sequence, perhaps um, step sequence B. Uh, we can come down to step sequence B again, set it maybe to another length as well, maybe like four this time. And maybe just on that first step, we set it to be So now we have our filter envelope being fired. based on a pattern defined by one of our sequences and then our amp by a different one. And by changing the length of the sequence, so maybe we can have it as five instead. We can get some really nice things going on. are quite 
complex sequencing ideas. And I say, there's a lot more to talk about with the sequencer, which we will get to, don't worry. But you can see how having this uh, trigger with something that isn't the uh, key can really get us to some very interesting places. So this next uh, idea is kind of related, but um, a little bit different. So we're going to start again by setting our amp envelope to being a plucky friend, just because it's easiest to hear what's going on that way. Okay. Uh, and I'm going to come across to my amp LFO and I'm going to uh, tempo sync it, maybe run a little bit faster. Um, or a lot faster, and I'm going to set its shape to be a random one, which is a uh, sample and hold kind of thing going on there. So I'm not using this to modulate anything, I'm just going to use this as a trigger source. So coming back to my amp envelope here, and we'll come into page three, and I'm going to set my trigger source uh, for this envelope to be that LFO. So generators, uh, amp LFO, there we go. And if I now hold down, we can hear that that is being triggered in time, but not on every step. And if we think about the shape of our um, amp LFO here, it's whizzing up and down. And every time it crosses that 50% threshold, it's going to trigger the note. And it's going to be doing that about 25% um, of the time because um, it's also going negative. It's about 25% of the time we're going to be getting a, uh, a trigger happening. Now we can um, come back to our amp envelope here and we can change how often that's going to be uh, triggering by lowering our threshold. So we should get more now, which we certainly are. And if we put the threshold up, like uh, as high as like 95, it's going to be barely happening, uh, very, very rarely, uh, based upon that tempo that we've got defined there. So it's been a while. Yeah, there we go. There's another one there. Now, uh, unfortunately, um, this is not modulatable, but we can get around that. But this idea here of creating um, timed but um, semi-random triggers is like a cornerstone for generative patches. If we want to create something that's chance-based but controllable, this is a great way of doing it and a great way of approaching it. Now, ideally, I'd kind of want this to be performable, uh, but we can't... Um, assign this to a modulation source like the knobs because it um, it, it just can't. <laughs> so we can't do it. But it is kind of another control which um, we can kind of do the same thing that is modulatable. So if we come across to our LFO here, we have this offset parameter here. And what this is going to do is shift our waveform up or down. And we'll talk about this in a bit more uh, depth um, when we come to the LFO video. But uh, it allows us to, to basically do the same sort of thing but it's modulatable, which means we could assign it to like a, a knob that we could have uh, as a macro here. So if we wanted to have this happen more regularly, we could turn our offset up a bit. And if we wanted it to happen less often, we could turn the offset down, right? So if we wanted to, we could add uh, a modulation target for that control amp LFO offset to this knob here. Uh, we could set it 50-ish uh, in either direction like that, and now we have a nice sort of control over how often that's going to be happening. To basically nothing there. To more there, but we probably also want to change the threshold around a little bit to make it fine-tuned, but yeah, we can make that perform all there. So if we want... Um, this sort of generative thing. We'd probably want to slow it down a little bit, but you know. Semi-random, semi but still in time and controllable. 
triggers. Which is cool. So this final idea I want to show you is a little bit different to the uh, other two we've been looking at, uh, because this is a way of us being able to get more complex envelope shapes than we can usually get with just a single ADSR by combining two different uh, envelopes via uh, that trigger source. So um, let me just turn down one of these oscillators, uh, this one instead, let's turn on one of these oscillators. Okay. Um, and to make this really, really obvious, I'm going to work with the uh, pitch of the oscillators just because it's easiest to hear. You probably, you, know, well, you may want to do with pitch, but you might want to experiment with this similar idea with other uh, parameters that we can modulate. Uh, but let's start with this first um, oscillator here and uh, we'll set it, um, sorry, this first envelope here, this oscillator one envelope, and we'll set it to have like a an onset like that. And then it could just have a hold and release, something like that. That's fine. Um, and we'll assign it to the tuning of this first um, oscillator here. So uh, mod, we want it to be assigned to the tuning. And I want to use this envelope here, enter. And we'll make it really obvious. We'll jump up by like a fifth. So if I play a note now, we get that raise up to a fifth. Right, so um, that gives us our um, sort of basic pitch shape to this um, note. But what if we wanted to do something a little bit more interesting with like a little flourish here? So perhaps we want to go, uh, like someone sort of bent a whammy bar on a guitar right at the end of that ascension that we had there with our um, pitch. Now we can't do that with a normal ADSR, but we can do it by combining two different envelopes. So let's think about that uh, kind of shape. What that is, is um, this sort of triangle shape that we already have set up here on oscillator uh, two envelope. Um, so let's make it a little bit shorter. We have a little wow wow kind of sound uh, shape going on there. And if we apply that negatively to our pitch, uh, we're going to get uh, kind of happening. Now, um, let's assign that to pitch uh, first of all. So we're going to say, yep, we want it to be the tuning of this envelope. We want to use this here. Press enter and we'll just maybe go down by three semitones. I'll do. So if I now play a note, there's, it's not doing what we want it to do. That's kind of a weird delayed start to the um, uh, uh, swoop up there. So what we really want to happen is we want oscillator one envelope to get all the way to the top. And then when we get to the top, we want it to go. Okay. So what we can do is come into page three of this um, envelope here, the oscillator two envelope, and we can send its trigger source to be the other envelope we're using. So oscillator one envelope. And we're going to say that when it gets to not quite 100%, because for some reason it doesn't work if you set it to 100%, but if we say 99, it's going to um, trigger this envelope. And we don't want this to happen when we play the note. We only want it to happen when it's triggered. So we can turn trigger at note on off. So now if I play this note, we should have this rise up as defined by this envelope. It gets to the top and it's going to do the little wiggle, fingers crossed. You hear that? So we've actually added two stages to our envelope here. I might make it a bit shorter. Um, whether or not that in particular is a useful sound, your mileage may vary. Um, but hopefully that demonstrates this idea that um, we can combine different envelopes by having them trigger at different times. And we could we could chain four of them together, having each one triggered by the, the, the next envelope. So if this one triggers this one, which then triggers this one, which could then trigger that one again. Uh, we can create quite complex envelope shapes by um, having them trigger when they hit their peak each time. 
I think probably just having two chained is, is, is enough most of the time. Um, nevertheless, it is interesting that you could take this to its uh, logical conclusion and do something bonkers, make it a bit more obvious by diving down further. And of course, these two envelopes don't have to be affecting the same thing either. We could say we get to the top of our pitch swoop and then you do a little filter dip or something uh, rather than a tuning dip or, or whatever it happens to be. Um, we could uh, configure this to a wealth of different things. Um, but I just wanted to highlight that you can trigger one envelope to fire at the end or rather at the apex of a, another envelope. So anyway, um, that's it for today uh, with the envelopes. I hope that demonstrated how flexible the envelopes can be uh, in terms of how they can be combined, how they can be triggered, and how they can be fine-tuned using that really, really useful curve control. Um, as I say, it's a level of control that I haven't really seen uh, for uh, envelopes on, on many other sort of hardware since. Uh, and it's kind of a testament to the ideas that the ModWave developers kind of came up with. If you did enjoy the video, um, as always, if uh, you wanted to leave a thumbs up, uh, that would always be massively appreciated. And make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any upcoming synth fun, especially if you're interested in the ModWave. Uh, quite a lot of uh, ModWave uh, stuff planned to turn up in the next few weeks and months. Other than that, um, as always, thank you so much for joining me. And until next time, take care. Bye-bye.